I don't care what anyone says, I'm knitting that. I woke up and I thought, a puffer vest. <laughs> I want to knit a puffer vest. And then we get to go button shopping. My favorite. <laughs> This is also known as Nora Knits. Hello there. I'm Nora, and you're watching, also known as Nora Knits. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with me for another episode today. I am so excited because we are doing a video that I have just been eagerly awaiting. I've been prepping for this video for a few weeks now, so I'm so excited to share all of my thoughts with you. And this is my spring knitting plans. So let's just go ahead and let's let's dive in. <laughs> I I feel like I have been highly anticipating this video for a few reasons. First of all, spring. <laughs> I'm so ready to put the snow and the cold weather behind us and welcome some sunshine into my life. It also means that it's my birthday, <laughs> so that's exciting. I am also just excited to be doing another seasonal planning video with you because that means that we've been here for a little bit now, so very excited about that. In anticipation for this video, I have been really considering how I want to approach knitting in this spring season. If you didn't know, I've been knitting for just over a year now. So this is my first spring summer as a sort of seasoned knitter. And, and so I didn't know how that was going to influence what I make. I feel like last spring, I didn't necessarily knit anything particularly springy. I was, I was just navigating how to knit. So I didn't particularly plan out something that was going to be a spring knit. And then I looked into this year and wondered if I was going to be approaching spring knitting with this same mentality. Is, am I knitting for spring? Am I knitting for summer garments? Am I just continuing knitting and it's a new season. So I'm going to go over all of my thoughts on those things today, as well as a sort of approach that I have decided to take. But I thought first, really quick, we could just review my winter knitting plans and sort of see how that turned out as it was my first time sitting down and planning my knits for the season. So I'm going to be reading and referencing my iPad here with some of my notes, but I did want to make sure that I looked back too. So I had done my winter knitting plans at the middle of November. So officially, if we're sort of calling that season over now, it's been four months of dedicated winter knitting, which means that all the ideas that I had back in November, I've had four months to knit or not knit those things. And I was hoping to use that as my reference point as I'm going to consider spring to be from this mid-March period to mid to late June. And so I have about three months of spring season knitting that I'm talking about here today. So from my winter knitting plans, I had planned to knit, let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so I had planned to knit about nine different things. I can't believe that I would have not added at least a tenth for <laughs> just to be able to say that there were 10 things. But from that list that I have here was the Augustine's number 25 dress. And I did complete that. That was my Christmas dress I knit. I intended to knit a boulevard bag by Lily Kate France, and I did, in fact, knit that out of some thrifted yarn that I had. I had intended to knit a shacket out of some thrifted boucle yarn that I had. However, I thought about that a little bit more and ultimately decided that the shacket ideas that I had and the yarn that I wanted to use 
weren't exactly a perfect marriage. So I decided to hold off on that for a little bit. So I did not knit up a shacket in the winter season. I intended to knit a folklore cardigan by Lion Brand for my cousin Emma, and that is currently in progress with the hopes of wrapping it up by the end of March. I intended to knit a sweater for my dad for his birthday, and I was able to accomplish that. I knit the Learn to Knit a Men's Sweater Pattern by Stacey Perry. I had some Karen Blossom Cakes yarn that I wanted to knit into a very basic sort of everyday sweater, and I was able to accomplish that by knitting the Cyclamen sweater by Cecilia Garcia Rodrigo. I had bigger dreams of possibly knitting up a grayling cardigan by Natanami Magdalena Parker and didn't get around to that. However, it was more of just a vague idea. I also had mentioned my big dreams of wanting to knit a sand cardigan by Ulan Knitwear out of some yarn that I've been dreaming about for about a uh, well, now a year. <laughs> and I am in the middle of working on that right now. So that's so exciting. And in that video, I know I even mentioned it was going to be a little bit more of a spring knit. And the last thing that I had planned to knit in the winter was a muscle burra hat for my boyfriend. And I was able to knit that out of some hedgehog fibers yarn. So I feel very good <laughs> about the plans that I had made and what I, I made with those plans. And I feel like that was a good manageable amount of ideas and aspirations without any particular has to be done by this time, with the exception of a few things in there. Um, that it, it seems pretty reasonable what I was able to accomplish. And and I, I liked the idea of having this knitting plans video sort of be a, a broad general idea of what I wanted to knit, but then be able to reference it and pick and choose when and, and how I wanted to knit each of those items. So I, I liked that the way that that went. And I'm yeah, just pleased with what I was able to knit in the winter. So like I said, though, that was four months of knitting. At this point for spring knitting plans, I have about three months of knitting. And I do have to consider the fact that I will be carrying into the spring season my folklore cardigan for Miss Emma, as well as the sand cardigan by Ulan Knitwear, which is probably going to hang out. It's going to linger for a little bit because I'm not rushing that one. So I want to make sure that I'm keeping in mind that I do have a couple of these projects that are going to be carried over into spring. and then I also am going to be participating in a knit along with You Knit Toronto that has already started. However, I'm still waiting on my yarn so that I could participate, but I will be knitting the Azucena sweater by Claudia Quintilla of You Knit Toronto. So that's coming into my spring knitting plans. So knowing these things as well as trying to think ahead of all the things I would love to knit this year in general, and boy, is that a vast list. <laughs> There's no way it's ever all going to get done, and, and I understand that. So I decided to start off by thinking about, do I want to own spring, summer, warmer weather knits? Do I want a place in my wardrobe where I have t-shirts and tank tops and camis? Or is that not something I'm going to reach for? Also, would I even be comfortable if I don't want those things in my wardrobe knitting on a bulky sweater <laughs> throughout these warmer months to not even be able to wear until the fall and winter? Plus, trying to think about my long-term knitting plans, all of the things I would love to accomplish within the next year of knitting, and the way that my work schedule sort of fluctuates. 
and how to maybe arrange those plans so that they fit best with my work schedule. So I am a bridal hairstylist, which means that I have kind of on and off seasons as far as how busy I am. And it's interesting, though, the wedding season has shifted a little bit from spring, early summer to now it's mostly fall. And with that in mind, I know that last year I was trying to work on some more complicated knits during my busier season, and those things just did not go well together. So I'm trying to learn from how I structured all of my knitting last year and and try my best to set myself up for success this year. What a long-winded way of saying that I have a few takeaways. First of all, I could benefit from having a few warmer weather knits in my wardrobe, but I don't feel like I have to focus on that because most of the time it's going to be so warm that I don't want to wear knitwear or it's going to be too cold for a summer knit. So I I don't feel like I have to build up this summer knit wardrobe. And I know that I don't mind working on a more winter weather project during the warmer months. It doesn't bother me all that much. I also know that most of my sort of basic knitting plans that I have for the year, I would like to hang on to for those busier months that I'm going to have later in the year when I have a little bit less capacity to worry about new learning new techniques or knitting more complex patterns. So I would like to take advantage of these warmer months when things are a little bit slower to focus on that. But then I also had this feeling of most of the ideas that I have of the things that I really want to knit involve buying yarn. And And if I total up all of that yarn, there's going to be some money spent. Meanwhile, I have a bit of a stash. I don't think it's overwhelming. I have, I think, three of those storage tubs full of yarn and most of that is thrifted yarn. So with all of these ideas in mind, the theme that I've come up with for myself, and I invite anyone else who wants to join me on this little bit of a a test and journey, is a stash bust spring. I want to do some spring cleaning from my yarn stash, and challenge myself to use what I have before I go and purchase a bunch of new yarn for projects that I want to knit. If I challenge myself to do this now, I'm going to feel a lot more comfortable later in the year making the purchases on the yarn that I really want to work with, on the projects that I'm dying to work with. And I also like a challenge to sort of you know, flex my creative muscles a little bit. And so for those reasons, I am doing a sort of no-buy spring, and I'll tell you a couple more rules I've had for myself in regards to that, but I am calling this Sash Bust Spring. So because of that, rather than going through all of my knitting plans and pulling patterns first and then finding the yarn later, I am doing things a little bit opposite. So I went into my yarn stash and I pulled all of the yarns that were exciting me right now or have maybe been lingering or I've ch- like struggled to find something that would work for that. And I've literally spent weeks going through Ravelry and Instagram and just Pinterest inspiration trying to find ways to use this yarn that I already have. And I feel like I've been successful. So I have some loose plans. I have some more strict plans. And I have some things that I'm hoping to crowdsource a little advice on. 
And all with the intention of sort of spring cleaning out the yarn stash so that in those later months in the year, especially in my busy season, I'm going to want to treat myself. So I would love to make this investment in my stash right now uh, to to open up some space for (laughs) later in the year. Now, I have a few rules, like I said. The first rule is going to be, so no buy in the spring. However, if I need to purchase yarn in order to fill out a sweater's quantity or or supplement, something like that, that's going to be okay. I thought about that one for a little bit and originally felt like that was sort of cheating, but I have a larger quantity of yarn in my stash that's not quite enough to knit a sweater out of. And so it's just going to sit there. And so if I could purchase some yarn to finish out that yarn, that sweater's quantity, and therefore get the whole thing out of stash, that's going to be a lot better than me just letting it sit there and it not being enough to do any one thing. I definitely had another rule here. (laughs) Will it come to me? Editing Nora here to tell you that it did not come to me. However, it did later. And the other rule is just that if I happen to find a sweater's quantity of yarn at the thrift store that is irresistible and I just can't pass it up, that's going to have to be okay because that's so hard to come by and I don't want to miss out on a really great deal just for this stash bus spring. So yeah, that's the other rule. (laughs) <laughs> the other rule comes to me. It's completely left my brain. <laughs> so I'll mention it later. But the real big one is that is is the if I need to purchase yarn to supplement what I have in the sash in order to complete a project, then that's going to be okay. So I have brought all of the yarn that I am planning to work with down here. I have created this funny little diagram here where I started by writing out all of the different yarns that I have and then branching off from that, seeing which ones I wanted to work with together, which ones I already knew what I wanted it to be. Some of them I said, I know I want this to be a sweater, but what kind of sweater? And then went researching from there. So I'm going to pull the yarn that I have one at a time in no particular order. And I'll talk to you about my plans for that yarn. The first one, I actually maybe am pulling this in a particular order. I'm just starting out with my most excited plan. And that is for this Knit Picks Bear uh, yarn that I have. It's 100% merino wool. It's, I think the colorway is natural. (laughs) But it's just this undyed, very simple yarn. I believe that on the website, it says that this is a DK weight, but I've knit this up into more of a worsted weight. And I have five skeins of this yarn, which is the reason I've made the rule of purchasing yarn to supplement. Now, I thrifted this yarn last year and have been hanging on to it because it's not quite enough for a sweater for my size in the oversized fit that I generally prefer. However, there is one sweater that I have been now eyeing for a few months since it came out. And it's not every day that I see a new design come out and literally like gasp at the look of it and then say, yes, I want to knit that right now. And this sweater was one that gave me that feeling. So I am talking about the Texo sweater by Zenit Knits. This pattern just came out in January of this year, but I know I was eyeing it even prior to its release. It is a stunning cable knit sweater that has a collar that is almost like a a sailor collar or something where it just sort of folds back behind the neck. And it has these little I-cord type details 
in the drop shoulder of the sleeve. And then it features this deep V-neck. So it looks like the perfect sweater to throw on on a chillier spring or summer evening. Go walk down by the beach. That seems like the perfect day to me in this sweater. And honestly, I just I the the look of it was so good. I knew I wanted to knit this up in a sort of creamy colored yarn. However, actually cream isn't exactly my color. This more just off white is definitely better for me than a yellow undertoned cream. Being that this pattern calls for a worsted weight yarn, I think that this Knit Picks Merino will be close enough that I can figure out all of that. So looking at the yarn quantities called for in the sizes around mine, I'm definitely going to have to order some more of this yarn, but I think it's going to be well worth it. And I'm hoping that because it is undyed, the color shouldn't be an issue. So that is going to be sort of the, I don't know, biggest, most exciting thing on my spring knitting plans list. Now, another yarn that I had in my stash was this universal yarn universe celebrating our 10th year. <laughs> Funny little lace weight yarn that is a linen, combed cotton, glitter, and polyamide blend. And I have four balls of this yarn. On each one of those, you've got 50 grams, which is equivalent to 246 yards. And I had purchased this from Webs last year with the hopes of making something else out of it and wound up just not liking the way that it was working up. So I was trying to be creative with ways that I could get this out of my stash when I remembered that I also had a few balls of this Lion Brand Trubu yarn in the colorway Khaki. And this is a bamboo yarn. Is there anything else? Rayon from bamboo. There is 241 yards on this 100 gram ball. And I have three of these. So I thought it might be an interesting combination to try and hold these together. The Universal Yarns Yarn Universe, this the sparkle yarn, <laughs> it has a core of what I'm assuming is the linen, and it's almost a, a mauve sort of gray brown. It lives right in that corner of sort of purple gray brown with some blushier undertones. And then there are silver and gold sort of tinsel strands running through it, all the while being strangled <laughs> by a black thread. And this khaki color, even holding this against my shirt, you can see that it really leans this green olivey undertone. But definitely, I mean, Think khaki pants with a touch more olive to it. And so a weird combo for sure. But I thought maybe with the right stitch pattern, project pattern in general, they might be interesting knit up together. And so I did knit a little swatch. A little, a very little swatch. And I actually posted this on my Instagram stories a couple weeks ago when I was just starting to play around with these things. And I was asking you guys if you thought that this was intriguing and interesting or just too weird and ugly. And there were definitely people <laughs> on both sides of the coin. But I think that the general consensus was leaning more towards it's intriguing. And I do feel like in this small swatch, when you look at it so closely, you're seeing all of those different little bits of color. However, from afar, and particularly when this is knit into a full garment, I think that this is going to just be a really interesting dimensional knit. The fabric isn't scratchy at all. It's super fluid. The linen, I know from having swatched with this before, definitely softens up after using it. So I think putting it up against that bamboo, it's going to give the bamboo a little bit more structure. And then the bamboo is helping to sort of add a little more fluidity to the linen. And looking at the fabric, I think that I would like to knit 
a t-shirt out of this yarn. The gauge that I got on that little tiny swatch was about 20 stitches per inch. And so I was trying to find some patterns on Ravelry that would suit that gauge. And I think it's going to be best suited in a stockinette pattern. So naturally, the first idea that came to mind was the Tulsa Tea by Rebecca Klo, Crayabea. And I like the idea of that. However, I'm not 100% sold on a raglan t-shirt for myself. I think I would prefer something with either a set-in sleeve or a little bit more of a drop shoulder. I also think I'm going to have to purchase one more ball of the True Boo to have enough yarn for a t-shirt. So definitely, this is where I'm opening the floor to suggestions if you have an idea for a sort of DK worsted t-shirt pattern that is simple enough that the yarn can be the star of the show. I would love to know what your recommendations are. I also was thinking about potentially turning this into more of a tank style, in which case I thought about the patty by Amy Christoffers that I actually talked about a few videos back in my sets pattern roundup. And it's just a very basic tank pattern, has a little bit of an A-line shape to it. And I thought that that might be an interesting idea to also have a little bit more longevity or flexibility throughout the year and being able to wear that under a blazer or something a little more comfortably than a t-shirt would be. So I'm opening the floor up for suggestions on this one, but definitely looking for a simple, staple design that will let the yarn sort of be the star of the show because it's going to be subtle, but still have that sparkle and interest, I think it's going to be a really interesting looking fabric. So I'd love to know your thoughts for that one. Now, this next one was actually the most recent thing I've added to this list that I just had the idea for the other day, but I am coming back to the thrifted boucle yarn that I had intended to knit into a shacket in my winter knitting plans, and I was thinking about other applications for this yarn. I also have some, oh, I don't know, probably a DK weight cream yarn that was also thrifted and without a label. My best assumption is that it's a 100% wool. I have a good bit of both of these and I, <laughs> the other night in the middle of the night, I, I woke up and I thought a puffer vest. <laughs> I want to knit a puffer vest. And I thought for sure that would not be a thing already. However, when I looked on Ravelry, someone else, of course, had already come up with this idea and it is exactly what I was picturing. This pattern is called the reversible puffer vest. And I'm going to type the designer's name here because I don't want to mess it up. But it's basically, I mean, it's exactly that. It's a little puffer vest. It does say in the pattern description that you're going to stuff it, which was exactly what I was hoping to do. And I didn't even think for it to be reversible, but this pattern includes a reversible option. I mean, you could just knit both sides the same, but I thought it would be a great way to get both of these yarns out of my stash and have it reversible so that I could have a sort of boucle side and then a plain side. And the boucle would look great popping out from the inside or vice versa, having the texture on the front. I love the look of this little pattern. And I think that that could be such a cute way to use this yarn. The pattern does call for worsted weight yarn. So I think I would have to hold each of these double but I don't have an issue doing that because I have, like I said, plenty of these two yarns. And so for a vest, I'm picturing something maybe kind of cropped, but I could also, if I feel like I'm just going to have so much of it left over, maybe just knit it to however long I can literally make it and have as long a vest as I want. I don't know. This was very recently added, but I thought it might be a cool way to use this yarn. So I'd love to know what you guys think. I also though think that if anything is getting knocked off of this list and pushed to another season, it's probably going to be this one. But 
I don't know, it also kind of has me excited and intrigued to try something so new. This design is so interesting looking, so I'd love to know your thoughts. <laughs> this next yarn and pattern I'm feeling pretty set on, and again, I think that it makes it a little bit higher of a priority in my mind, not to mention the fact that it would be a summer knit as well as far as something I could wear in the summer. So I think it would be smart to prioritize it so that I can have it for this warmer weather season. And that involves some yarn that I also thrifted. I had thrifted this on a cone and it, um, I had taken it off the cone. I think I literally bought my um, ball winder and just went crazy. Like I had so much fun <laughs> winding up yarns. But also with the cones that I've thrifted, I wanted to wind them off of the cone to see if the actual core of the cone would give me any more information as to what the yarn is. Because the only info that I have on this one is that it's DK, it said cash merino, so in a perfect world, that means a cashmere merino blend, how luxurious. And the color is verde musco, which someone said was olive green. And makes sense, it's a very olive green yarn. I have, I think, about 300 grams of this. So I was hoping to find a pattern that would be a vest and ideally something that had some lace to it so that I could get the whole vest out of I have the out of the 300 grams that I have. So then I also went and looked at my wardrobe and the things that I like to wear in the spring and summer. And last year I had thrifted a button-down knitted vest and I got a ton of wear out of it. So I was really hoping to find a pattern that would check all these boxes, DK, lace, vest, button down. And I think I found just the one. That is the Florence Tank by Sari Nordland. It's a really timeless looking vest tank that has a v-neck and this lace pattern that's not such an open gauge lace, but rather just has little bits of eyelets sort of peeking through. And it looks almost more like a cabled lace to me. It's very interesting looking, and I'm hoping that I can get a tank like that out of what I have. I did also grab from my stash I have one ball of this Touch of Linen by Lion Brand that I had purchased on clearance at Joann's. It says $3.97 a few years ago now. And I figured worst case scenario, these are close enough that if I could at least get the body of a vest out of the yarn I have from this cone, I could always do the button band in this color. And while there's a slight difference in, of course, the fiber, of course, the texture, the spin on this. I think for a button band versus the body of the vest, it wouldn't be huge. It wouldn't be a huge deal. So that is a sort of backup plan that I have. But I just really love the idea of having something like this vest tank in this color. I'm <laughs> wearing green today. It's one of my favorite colors. I think that this would be a really nice sort of neutral green that would look fantastic with all sorts of jeans and skirts and white jeans, as well as trousers and dress it up under a blazer. I think it'd be very versatile, but then also could be carried into the fall as a proper vest over something else. So I loved the idea of that. And honestly, I've just been itching to work with this yarn. So like I said, I think that this is going to jump up to a higher priority of these spring knitting plans, and I'm very excited about that. However, that being said, I was fielding some additional suggestions to my list of criteria for this yarn on Instagram, and I got some great suggestions over there, but I think don't think anything has beat out this Florence tank. So if you feel like you have a pattern suggestion for my kind of needs and goals with this yarn, I really wanted something that was going to be top down just because of the yarn constraints that I have. And honestly, that is the only thing that's causing a little bit of pause with the Florence tank pattern. But otherwise, I think it's gorgeous and it would make a 
perfect Florence tank. And then we get to go button shopping. My favorite. <laughs> All right. Next up is a fun one. If you had seen my yarn stash, my thrifted yarn stash video, then you honestly would have seen most of this yarn. But this was the one that was uncomfortable to hold up on camera because of the way that it was originally wound. It looked like a bunch of hot dogs on the screen. And so I wound it up into a cake because I couldn't, I couldn't do that. <laughs> but I have these three, I had, I have three balls of this yarn. It was thrifted. I know it had a label on it when I purchased it. However, I know it also fell off and now I have no idea where it is. What I do know is that if it wasn't 100% wool, it's definitely a wool blend composition and all natural fibers. And what I didn't realize at the time was that I weighed one ball of that yarn and it was actually 250 grams of yarn. So I have quite a bit of this yarn. And what's unfortunate about that is that this color is just does nothing for me. This literally is just about the color of my skin. And so having it anywhere my, near my face feels like a challenge. Also, I'm not particularly sensitive, but this is some of the scratchiest yarn I have ever felt. But I have 750 grams of it, so I was trying to think of ways I could utilize it. And then it dawned on me. I think that the way to use up all of this yarn, all of it, <laughs> so that there's none left, and avoid the issues of having it anywhere near my face or having to wear it on bare skin. It's so itchy. I think that I should knit this into a skirt. I feel, okay, so with a skirt, a wool skirt, I'm wearing in cooler months. So I'm probably going to be wearing something underneath it, like tights, or at the very least, I always will wear sort of bike shorts or something underneath a skirt. A lot of times I like to wear a skirt with taller boots, so it shouldn't ever really make contact with my skin. The other thing is, I think it's a really pretty color, but next to my face, it, it doesn't work. So if it's down on my lower half, then I can wear a different colored top with it, and it should make this color a little bit more appealing. I also figured if I finish knitting up the skirt and I'm still not crazy about the color of it, we could experiment with over dyeing it, but I don't want to experiment with over dyeing something like a sweater because if I really love this sweater and then I over dye it and don't like the color, I don't know. It feels like too much of a gamble. So I liked the idea of finding a very simple skirt pattern, something I literally would just be miles of stock and net and as little um as as little investment as possible as far as money. So I would love to know what if you have any suggestions on a kind of simple long skirt pattern that I could make out of 250 grams of a sort of borderline DK worsted weight yarn. I'd love to know what you have in mind. Uh, based on the little bit of research that I had done for this yarn, I found a free pattern from Drops called the Golden Years Skirt. And I like it because it has a very column, simple shape. It's mostly stockinette, but then has these columns of, or these sort of pinstripes in a, I don't know if it's a ribbing, the photos are a little bit tricky to tell, so I'll have to go through the pattern and see. But I like the idea of having something that's primarily stockinette, but maybe has just a little bit of visual interest so that I don't just have such a flat skirt on. Um, and, and yeah, I like the idea of utilizing a free pattern for this just because it's going to be a bit of a gamble with the color, with the fiber, with the style of it. Am I going to wear it? So if you know of a pattern, if you have a suggestion, I would be open to hearing what you guys have to say. But for now, I thought that that might be a good way to use up some yarn that otherwise just I don't think is going to work for me on my actual body, <laughs> like on my body as if my legs are part of my body, on my chest, near my face, 
you get it. So those are my thoughts for what I call my hot dog yarn, but my miscellaneous thrifted, very scratchy wool flesh colored yarn. <laughs> Now, the next yarn that I have in stash is everything I have left over of my Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool Yarn in the Colorway Oatmeal. This is just a fraction of what I have left. I still have three and a half skeins, maybe two and a half. However, this yarn is readily available, so if I had to pick up a little bit more, I think I could. So this is a 100% wool yarn. I used it in my Corsavin cardigan by Tanya Hodney that I just finished up a few weeks ago now, and I had purchased that yarn in a bulk six-pack order on Amazon when it was like on clearance because it said it was damaged and it wasn't. And so I bought six skeins of that yarn at a time and I and I used about half of it. So I still have about half left over. And everything that I kind of wanted in a gray-ish yarn, it's a it's a it's a warm gray. Um everything that I wanted in this color was another cardigan. And I just don't think right now it makes sense for me to knit a second cardigan in the same color. So I tried to branch out a little bit further and decided it would make a really great base to use with other colors for another goal of mine that I have for this year, which is to knit color work. So I have a couple different options here of yarns I could pair with this and different ideas I have for that. Let's start out by talking about the one that's a little bit more concrete in my mind right now. So I have plenty of this thrifted wool in this really stunning, bright, is this a royal blue? Just true primary blue color, as well as a whole bunch of the same yarn in this very primary red. On camera, I think it reads a touch more orange, but I feel like this is a proper, proper red. And I would never wear a sweater in this color. Blue isn't my thing. I would wear a sweater in this red, but I don't have quite enough, I think, to knit up a full sweater in this color. These both lean a little bit more of a fingering weight. The blue is a touch thicker than the red, but it's also possible that that's just because I am looking at the outside of this cone, which has been tossed around. I mean, it was thrifted. So my thought was, if I held each of these double, I could match about the weight that the oatmeal yarn is. And then I remembered that there was a color work pattern I had been eyeing in this sort of color scheme. I'm not sure how this is pronounced, but it looks like the Inge, it's probably more of like an Inya, um, Inya, Inya sweater solo, Inge sweater solo by Lene Holm Samsi, Lenich. <laughs> That's what I'm reading off of Ravelry. And this is a color work sweater. And in the sample, it is knit in a sort of eerily simmer, similar color scheme where the main color of the sweater is done in a sort of taupey, gray, beigey, neutral. And then it features the all over color work in a red. And then the majority of the color work is done in a little bit more of a navy blue, but blue nonetheless yarn. And I just, I adore everything about this. It looks like it has a raglan construction and it's busy all over, but almost because it's busy all over, it sort of neutralizes itself to the eye and becomes a lot easier to look at. And it's a classic shape. It's a classic color work sweater. I just love the idea of having that in this combo, especially especially because I would not otherwise wear something in this blue. So it would be great to, like I said, hold them double to use up quite a bit of this blue. It would not use up as much of the red, but like I said, I'm more likely to wear something in this red color, so I wouldn't mind still having some of it left over. In fact, I would love to knit up 
some red yarn into a netty scarf by Lily Kate France in the larger version to have a nice red shawl on my hands. I think that'd be great. So I would not be mad about having a lot of this left over. But I thought that this would make a really great combination in a sweater like that. If you have other ideas for this sort of color scheme and a sort of DK worsted weight range, definitely let me know what you think. Now, I have The power just went out. <laughs> why did the power just go out? Okay, I'm gonna go figure out why the power went out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm back. How weird was that? I have absolutely no idea why the power went out. But we have returned. I think that the last thing I was talking about was this yarn combo here. And then I was about to introduce the other idea that I have for this yarn. <laughs> So in my thrifted yarn stash, I have these four gorgeous autumnal sort of colors. And these are, they're a little ball band stuck inside of there. Nature Spun 100% wool. There's 50 grams in each of these balls, and each one is equivalent to about 184 yards. And I have been kind of hanging on to these colors since I picked them up. I'm not sure how well they're reading on camera, but we have this grassy, little bit of a less saturated sort of grassy green. There is this beautiful, rusty, scarlety, orangey red, this very just tan, not even caramelly color. It's a very, it's a very neutral tan. And then my favorite, which is this deep, deep burgundy, very chocolatey, plummy, purpley, red, brown, really gorgeous color. So I think that the four of these are so beautiful, and I love the way that they look together. But of course, this is only 200 grams of yarn on its own. So I feel like I need to introduce another yarn. And so I thought that this would be a really great balanced neutral to have up against all of these colors. There you go. The gray has that sort of warmth undertone to it, so I think it plays nicely with these warmer shades. And I am right now thinking a couple of things. A, I would really love to at some point knit the Veronica Lindbergh pattern Kotova Kika, um, her stitches sweater. And so I think that that could be an option for this color story. I also, though, I think a more wearable idea that I have is just to do a really simple striped sweater. I also am thinking Veronica Lindbergh for her stripe hype sweater. Specifically, Marlene Knits had done a version where it's very muted, sort of neutrals. And what I like about that sweater a lot is that the stripes are sort of done in chunks. So it's alternating sort of one color with your main color for a few stripes, then moving on to the next, and then the next, and then the next. So I like that it's sort of done in a color-blocked striping way. However, I also really like the look of the sibling sweater, My Size, by Laura Penrose, and think I could maybe just apply the sort of color-blocking stripe style into the sibling sweater pattern because I do really love the shoulder detail that that one has. So I definitely feel like I have some options here. And really what I need to consider most of all is that if I definitely want to knit that Inge or Inya sweater utilizing the oatmeal, then how much of the yarn am I going to need for that? So then would I even have enough to sort of make this a thing? I also could consider if I have leftover of this cream 
wool that I had mentioned pairing with the boucle for a vest, then I could probably hold this double and meet about the same gauge as these colors here. So I'm definitely open to suggestions for these four colors. I do feel like if they're on their own together, it's a lot of just it would muddy the colors a little bit, so I like the idea of separating them with more of a brighter neutral. But then I also think about some, say, like Marie Wallen patterns that do tend to have that more desaturated color work, Fair Isle look to them, and I love the look of that. I just know that I don't have quite enough for what I prefer to knit, which is usually a sweater. So please let me know if you have ideas for this color story and I'm very open to it. Oh, another one that I had on my list for that color story was the Leith Cardigan by also Rebecca Klo, the Crayabea. For the same reason as that stripe hype sweater, the idea of sort of color blocking and having a sleeve where it's the oatmeal and the burgundy, and then another sleeve of the oatmeal and the green, and different panels and utilizing different colors. And then that way too, if I don't have enough to create one full sweater, I could introduce even another color in there and maybe utilize even more stash. So those are all of the ideas that I have. Like I said, I'm super excited to get some of this yarn out of my stash. I'm excited to challenge myself to come up with new combinations and different ideas. I think if I had to, like I said, prioritize maybe my top three of what I would really love to get done by the end of spring from this stash busting perspective. I would probably say the very first thing I would love to knit is the Sorry Nordland Florence tank or just something with that olive green yarn. Next would be the Texo sweater by Zanit Knits. The only reason that's not number one is because I am wrapping up my cousin's folklore cardigan, which is an all-over cabled cream cardigan. So I think just for the sake of having something that's not so redundant, <laughs> I would maybe put that just a little bit further down the list. And... Other than that, honestly, the linen and bamboo combo for a simple tea, only because I feel like that's a serious gap I have in my wardrobe is just a really simple classic tea. So I'd love to know what your thoughts are. Would you be interested in maybe creating a sort of knit along with this stash bust spring idea? If so, definitely let me know down below and maybe I can even put together some prizes if that's something that you'd like to challenge yourself to do along with me. I also think depending on how this goes during the spring, I might just prolong this into the summer depending on where I'm at with my knits at that point. So we will see what we can get done by June 21st, the end of spring, and reevaluate then. So please let me know what you think. If you have suggestions for any of this yarn, definitely let me know. I'm not married to anything except for maybe the Texo sweater. That's the only one that I'm like, uh, I don't care what anyone says, I'm knitting that. So please let me know your thoughts. And if you enjoyed this video and knitting content in general, I definitely recommend that you stick around. I post a weekly podcast video every Saturday morning at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And other than that, I love to just sprinkle in videos like this one along the way. If there's anything that you want to see from me, then also let me know down below. I'd be happy to hear what you guys are looking for. So all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. You can subscribe and ring the bell. That way you never miss a future video. And with all that, big ol' thanks for watching. Happy spring, you all. And I will catch you on the next one. All right, bye.